In the late 1980s, a series of events was set in motion by an Alaskan bush pilot named Chuck McMahon. Born and raised in Gakona, Chuck was fond of using his Super Cub bush plane to take his friends skiing in the nearby Alaska range. But it wasn't until one fateful day on the Richardson Highway, outside of Valdez, that Chuck would take just the first step towards what would eventually become a renaissance in the sport of skiing. So when we'd travel to Valdez, I'd look up at those nice snow-covered mountains and I'd say, man, I think I could land at the top of that one and we ought to get something going with skiers down here. And so it happened that one day in the spring of 87, a small group of Valdez skiers, including a young visionary named Michael Kozad, gathered for what would be the first airplane-assisted skiing on Thompson Pass. Of course, the trip is made by plane. Here are jagged peaks and vast regions of ice and snow, a strange, cold world. The first time that we, you know, we're all standing on the side of the Richardson Highway and the plane pulls up. And we wander over, everything's tied on, we take off. We really don't know what to expect ourselves. All I can say is that we took off and 15 minutes later when you sat down on top of those mountains and the snow was just perfect, it was like a dream come true. And I think it cost $15. Made it. <laughs> okay, smile. Another hairy landing. <laughs> For years, Chuck would come to Valdez several times every spring and make some extra cash hauling skiers into the Chugach. Look good. Not much style and a lot of action. <laughs> you know, we were just fortunate that he was 100 miles up the road. I think there are a lot of people who are fortunate that Chuck was 100 miles up the road. And I think history's proven it. Chuck's time in Valdez marked the beginning of a new era as he and Kozad, convinced of the Chugach's skiing potential, decided to purchase the St. Lodge, an abandoned roadhouse right in the heart of Thompson Pass. Yeah, I mean, we thought we'd get the lodge going and, you know, maybe get a helicopter in there and start skiing. But he was the one with the ideas, for sure. To kickstart business at the Sena, Kozad envisioned an extreme skiing competition being held on Thompson Pass. It was an original idea that would introduce some of the world's best and most influential skiers to the mountains of Alaska. Included on the list of invitees was a young skier named Doug Coombs, who for the last few years had been gaining big mountain experience in Wyoming's Teton Range. In April of 1991, Michael Kozad, with tremendous support from the town of Valdez, managed to make his vision a reality as Doug Coombs and the rest of the West judges and contestants arrived at the St. Lodge. After two days of competition, Doug was crowned the first world extreme skiing champion and would return to Jackson with tales of the seemingly endless skiing terrain in Alaska. For Valdez, the heli skiing boom had begun. Well, the St. Lodge in the beginning, that was definitely sort of the clubhouse for things. All the best skiers were there, all the best snowboarders were there. Guys like Johan Olsen started showing up. The Juno boys were really a big part of that and people would live in anything to be there. Ah, uh, morning in paradise. It wasn't just on slope, on slope, off slope. That town was just lit up. It was amazing to see all the people from all over the world show up in Alaska and get dropped off on all these crazy peaks and realize that you could just ski anywhere. For the first time, riders from all over the world were sharing their experiences and fueling each other's ambitions. It was a unique era of discovery and progression which would set the tone for the future of free skiing in Alaska. It truly was a golden age of skiing. You, you, you read back at various times of creativity and energy, and Valdez had all that in spades. We wanted to make a movie, and we wanted to go heli skiing in Alaska. We had no idea of the implications. We had no idea that we were going to be doing first ascents that would just stand the test of time. We had no idea that Diamond was up there waiting for us. And when we got up there, it was, it just blew our minds. Just being in Valdez in general, kind of special because I think what I am trying to do, I owe a lot to people who were like opening up these scenes. That's what got me interested in this, this life, you know, of pursuing those best days you can think of as a skier.
fly around here, you get a good look at a bunch of different classic lines, and it's pretty obvious, like up front, why they're classics. You know, to repeat some of those classic big mountain lines is, in a lot of ways, just as cool as skiing something totally new. Growing up, one of the first snowboard movies I watched was TV5, the standard films. There were a couple parts that really stood out to me, and uh, one of them was Johan Olofsson's. It's a um, 3,000 foot descent, he does it in you know, 35 seconds, something like that. I don't know how fast I did it, but I didn't do that many turns, so I imagine it was probably fairly similar to, to Johan's time. Not that it's a race. It's just really cool to, to be able to do a line that you've seen and it stands out in your head. I don't know, I guess you always kind of want to emulate what you see, but, uh, but yeah, i definitely say that I was influenced by watching those guys ride. Last couple days was really, I think, a throwback to the early 90s Valdez heli missions. We just had a, our own ship, no guides, and just pointing directions and landing and skiing stuff. I mean, <laughs> it was awesome, but it was pretty cowboy out there too. So it was a cool way to kind of pay respect to uh, those people, whether we were doing it on purpose or not. <laughs>